Hello again. Hi. Hello. Everyone, everyone that wasn't here the day before or, or yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> Seems like a long time ago. <laughs> yesterday was really fun. Last night was really fun. Um, my name is Randy George. I'm a theremin player. Period. We're supposed to say, welcome, Randy. The theremin's anonymous. <laughs> oh, it's a special club for that. <laughs> I'll sleep on my couch. Uh, so yes, this is a continuation from yesterday's uh, introduction to the software I wrote, Mitty Merlin. Uh, yesterday I demonstrated a software kind of the, in a basic way using audio signals, monophonic audio signals from microphones and from a little fun ribbon controller device. Uh, but that's kind of just to put that in perspective of what, what, what's going on in, in a bigger picture as it uh, relates to the, the Ega matrix and, and theremin playing, and my theremin playing background. So uh, I mentioned yesterday that uh, that my my whole interaction with the the uh, Egan matrix and the continuum which, uh, is kind of an extension. It was a, a deep wish for me to extend the sounds of or get more sonic uh, flexibility out of the theremin because I felt like the the theremin's voice on its own was just not stimulating enough to me, uh, and I, I I always longed for a more complex uh, wave waves sounds and waves and, and timbres. And you can get that if you have a, a, a really nice vintage theremin that is produced in maybe the 30s when Leon Theremin is still around, 30s to 50s maybe. Or if you have a, a, a still have a tube theremin that uh, is paired up with a uh, tube amplified uh, loudspeaker. Because you get the coloration, you get the timbre, you get the, uh, the warmth. But uh, nowadays, with uh, instruments needing to be portable, that's kind of faded out of uh, it, uh, faded away, and not not as important. It's important for theremin players if they want to get out and share the instrument to have something portable. So this is an, a portable instrument here. Uh, this is the Moog Wave Pro. Unfortunately, it's been discontinued, but it's the finest theremin uh, that exists from a playability playability point of view. Uh, so pretty much everyone that, that plays the instrument now um, who's traveling a lot and wants a, a very a very consistent pitch interaction chooses this instrument. Uh, and if you don't choose this instrument, you're choosing to play another instrument for its its uh, sound quality, sound properties. Um, or or its, its playability if you prefer to have um, pitch spacing a certain way that's not like this one. So uh, I'll just first I'll clear up, um, maybe tell you a little bit about the way I play, which is which is significant because that's what enables me to to interact with uh, in a melodic way with uh, the instruments that I want to connect the, the continuum to get uh, more pleasant sounds out of the continuum. Um, <clears throat> it's it all boils down to the playing technique of the of the theorem player, and uh, there their understanding of how to play the instrument. So it's not really a, a topic you're gonna find on the internet just by searching. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's been mentioned already, if you want to play the theremin like, just like a violin, you have to dedicate yourself and you have to really stick, stick with it for many years. I, I started playing in, in uh, 2006, so it's been about 13 years. And I thought that in 2008 I was pretty good, <laughs> but it's, this doesn't work like that. You, you need to spend spend a lifetime to to learn an instrument like this. And so what you're seeing, what you're going to see me do today, is it's not like I just started playing and, and I'm able to do this wild stuff. So I'm not going to talk too much about how I play the instrument. If, if anyone's curious, I can talk about that later. But the uh, the instrument interaction. Is a, it's linear on this instrument, so I'm able to get uh, I'm able to get even steps the whole way across the, the playing range, and and so I won't get into the technical details too much. But uh, what I wanted to start with was the theremin sound because this is the sound that I, I was listening to and what I found to be not uh, <coughs> up to par for what I um, 
I was looking for. And so imagine I, I, I was playing with this sound. I got to sound pretty good. You know, I, once you learn how to play, you can hold the tune and play in, play in tune, play in tune with others and uh, produce a melody that's recognizable. It doesn't scare anyone away or any cats away. <laughs> or attract. Or attract. Okay. Attract it, yeah. Um, so this is the sound of the theremin. One moment. <coughs> dry theremin sound. I didn't, uh, I didn't really care for that sound too much, so I was able to treat it a little bit with uh, some effects, some filters, and um, EQ, and, and a little bit of convolution reverb, so I can pretty it up a little bit. This is what that sounds like. Took a little bit of the edge away, but if you, if you are listening to the evolution of the theremin sound, as I swell in, in volume and as I change pitch, there's not really a whole lot going on. There's a lot of people that know this already, um, but I'm, I'm just bringing it up so that there's a so that you have a baseline for uh, for what uh, for basically what why I'm enthusiastic about the uh, the, the uh, connection I've made with with these other instruments. So this is the uh, theremin probably as, as good as I'll be able to play with just just the treated sound. And listen to uh, the the wave shape, and and I'll I won't do a, a flare in, in the volume. I'll just keep a consistent volume amplitude. Oh, yeah, hold the instrument still. It's wobbling. Continue Con 2017. I had the chance. I, had, I was very fortunate to have, have uh, an opportunity to connect with the Ega Matrix in a half-size continuum, and I had my software MIDI Merlin running. And uh, this was uh, the first time I was able to play with this instrument, which which I'm comfortable with. Uh, and and the first sound, pretty much the sound that most. Uh, everyone starts to play on the continuum is the violin, viola, cello, bass. So this is what that sounds like. change the size of the, uh, the uh, body, you know, body it's cavity. It's funny because I've always liked the theremin from, and uh, even, uh, you know, I've heard prettier theremins, but even this theremin is just inherently, you know, limitations of an instrument are much of its beauty. But two years ago, I was so impressed because yours was the first example I'd ever heard of somebody midifying theremin and not just losing everything that the theremin is good at. 
at all. I, I, I was totally blown away by what you did to me. Humidified the thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but, but in converting the MIDI is basically reduce it to an X key or whatever. Right. You know, so, and, and it, it's just always been such a sad experience for me to see all these thereminists that are enamored with that. So there's a, it's a, good, it's a good point uh, that I would mention is that, yeah, in one way I'm reducing this the signal, the pitch and the amplitude to a control, basically it's a high resolution control rate signal. Uh, it just happens that I can do that pretty quick with, with this tracking algorithm. But I lose, I lose all the sonic qualities. I did. Personally, I wasn't too fond of the sounds that were coming out of the EtherWave Pro, so it's not a big loss for me. But what I, want, what I couldn't lose, I could not absolutely compromise on, was my technical facility. So that's what I spent basically like over a decade uh, to, to build. And it didn't, I didn't, it was incremental of course. And the technique I play with today didn't even really exist three years ago. It's been a process, just like everything is a process. That didn't work the same way two years ago. Uh, so uh, even, well, what I'm showing you today is actually, in some ways, this is just, just the beginning of, of a longer journey. Um, and maybe the end of a, a journey where I'm, the journey of me like hanging out in my cave, like programming <laughs> stuff in, in, in Mac. So I didn't mention the other day, but or yesterday, I didn't mention yesterday, but I, I'm not a proper developer, with, I don't know C programming, but I built everything in Max. So uh, MIDI Merlin was developed in Max, Cyclone 74 Max, and <coughs> And that's just what I'm, I'm really comfortable with. I've been doing that for uh, uh, six or s seven years, I guess. Oh, that's actually about as, as long as I've taken to, to work on that software. But then I got, okay, so fast forward now to 2018, and the Continue menu was announced at the Paris ContinueCon. Uh, and at, in that moment, I realized that, that it, it is possible that I don't have to wait uh, 10 years before I can save up enough. <laughs> uh, and and own a Continuum. So when the Continuum Mini was announced, I knew that I had to get one, and that would unlock all my all my dreams to evolve this experience. So I'm not, in one way, I'm, I'm improving theremin in some way with the sound, but it's really, it's my experience of playing the instrument. I wanted a deeper level of satisfaction, because I was already, I'm already satisfied. I, I, I won't find, I'm, not likely to play another instrument and get as good at it as I've gotten on the theremin. I, I, I was a bassoon player before I played the theremin. I got pretty good at that. That's also a, a huge commitment. Any instrument's a huge commitment. Uh, and, and I don't think I would want to start over from scratch learning another interface. I, I'm, I'm comfortable on this one and I, I built a really, I feel like a, a solid foundation for, uh, for tech, the technical approach I use. And that allows me to play melodies in tune, and that's that, that's nice for a theremin. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when uh, the Continue Mini came out, I got one, and uh, uh, in January of this year, was it this year? Yeah. Yeah. And it's what month is it now? <laughs> June. June. So yeah, in in less than five months or four months after I got the, I got the instrument around the NAM show, and. Uh, I hit the, the next uh, glass ceiling. I hit the next glass ceiling because you got a monophonic theremin. I've got a monophonic pitch tracking algorithm, but you've got a polyphonic uh, sound engine in the EV matrix. So I'm like, ah, what do I do about that? Uh, because if I play a monophonic tone and I play the next note, it's just going to be the same voice moving up and down. So that's where this other project came about. And, which I talked about a little bit yesterday. And it's also built in Max. Uh, and I wanted a way to, to work, <coughs> build something on the side and not have to put it uh, directly, uh, put it into Mini Merlin. But anyways, all this stuff is gonna end up going in there anyway. But I wanted a, a standalone package to, to put stuff in. <coughs> That's what this program is, it's called Razor, which is actually half of a pun. And that pun is, I don't even know, <laughs> Hawkins. Hawkins Razor. Hawkins, ah, ah, Hawkins Razor. Spark, uh, spark crowd you got. Uh, I knew somebody would get it. <laughs> but I just call it Razor. So, 
uh, in this in this app, I I, I uh, built uh, a voice rotator. So now I have access to the polyphony of the uh, the Eden matrix, and I, I built a couple fun features to let me. May take, I ask take a quick that. question of sure. people here that know MPE better than than I do? Um, I mean, I, I know my little corner of MPE that I worry about, but in MPE, <coughs> it, it, am I doing it wrong? Like when, when you receive something on the same MIDI channel, does that mean you're supposed to cut off the previous thing you got on that MIDI channel or not? You're not supposed to. No. Okay, so so you're covering up for my bug. Because I, I changed this in, in a version that we're going to release someday. Well, I understand you, you're going to one of the, the voice channels, the, the per note channels, it will uh, replace the note that was last played. No, but no, in the not. spec, you can actually send multiple notes to any given voice channel. But you but get enough control of having the that. Yeah, it does defeat. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 different question, different question. Is it saying where your finger, like if it's a continuum, is it saying where your finger is on the surface? No. Or is it saying, is he doing voice allocation? Like, it, voice is, it, allocation. is the sender doing voice allocation? It's just voice allocation. Yeah. I mean, uh oh, so I that. broke it. You, you could determine if you went by pitch using certain voices, but uh, that's more for a multi channel So, the sense. for example, if you have a stringed instrument like a MIDI guitar, you might want to have six different voices uh, to more uh, accurately mimic the thin strings of the voice. And you don't do that by by splits. You do that by what voice you allocate to. Is that correct? Well, you, the whole idea is you just you, you're able to get the, uh, those five MIDI messages going on, going off X, Y, and Z. Um, independent for each voice you play, but the, the whole idea is is, is based on uh, getting around the limitation of one channel. Uh, no, no, I understand that. But 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 if you want to have different strings on an instrument, you want to say I want to play the the C string on a viola. Yeah. Is that a split for the C string? Another split for the uh, G string? Another split for the D string? Or or is it all one thing and it's the voices within the one for thing? For that, you'd more likely just use a multi channel synth and you design uh, the high E string synth to uh, channel one, the, yeah. the second string yeah. synth to channel two. But there's nothing in MPE. In fact, MPE is actually only two splits. So you can either do um, okay. Master yeah. Channel 1 yeah. and, yeah. Channel. Uh, or, and the two steps are Master Channel 1 Master Channel 1. So I, I did have it right, thank you. Um, I, I just was embarrassed because you told me this. And I always thought I misunderstood the standard. Oh, good. No. Now I know no, something. Yeah, that's it. Good, good, good. Awesome. Well, I have to fix the new software, but that is now again. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, what, the way I'm doing it in here is probably the same way everyone's doing it. Uh, uh, channel pressure first, uh, yeah, channel pressure first, pitch bend first, uh, second. Uh, CC74, and then note on, so that a any new channel that is created, any new voice is created on a new channel, has its pitch offset set immediately before it's note on. There's no way you can yeah. play wrong. Uh, right. Right. Track. <coughs> There's no way you can track it correctly if you do it that in that order. So that's I got over the limitation by building a little voice rotator. It's happening inside this app, and I'm I, I went and went ahead and, and built something else I really wanted, which was just, I can't do this on a theremin, sustain a note and play another note. <laughs> that would be cool, wouldn't it be cool? <clears throat> Stuck note, but you know what I do? Play like eight times and then it goes. <laughs> 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 so, so, actually, do you know is that my bug or your bug? Oh, are you doing that to, with the foot control you have? So that's where this comes in oh, again, okay. once again. Uh, and I'll just maybe talk about this real quick. Uh, the way I have my performance rig set up, uh, this is this has multiple modes, and I use the top two buttons to do mode switching. So if you were watching a second ago, I just, uh, I can thumb through different things in my set over here uh, to, to, just to help me get around. So that was, that's, that's a good segue into uh, the next limitation, which is... I'm sorry, Randy, but sure. I'm just curious, you're barefoot? Okay, ground that's another story. <laughs> There's, okay, so for the way I play theremin, there are so many little details. Uh, that they matter a lot. <coughs> One of those things happens to be uh, a, a problem with the theremin. It's, a, it's an inherent 
design flaw that nobody, not really many people are aware of, and that is that, that uh, we're dealing with, dealing with uh, two capacitive interfaces here, and uh, a non-grounded person will, will actually end up becoming a conduit between the two circuits. Yeah. So the pitch, or the volume hand, can and does with, with nearly every theremin modulate the pitch uh, circuit, and that changes the, changes the pitch while you play, as you articulate, as you do a volume swell. But the reason many people don't hear it is because either their dynamic range is too short or is much shorter, or they don't have the pitch acu uh, acuity to uh, a certain pitch to be able to correct it. And sometimes people are compensating for it, so it becomes an automatic pilot thing. So barefoot comes from me being grounded to the system, to my to earth ground. I stand on this plate that's made of, uh, uh, it's just a wooden plate with a little craft foam layer and then another layer of conductive fabric. But when I'm on a gig, I don't step on, I don't stand on that, I have shoes on. I just felt comfortable here <laughs> and I uh, thought I could take my shoes off. But And you certainly can. Uh, thank, thank you. <laughs> you but on a gig, would on you a gig, something what like I, On a gig, what I do is I take a little alligator clip, <laughs> I attach it to this piece of conductive fabric, and I tuck that in right here. And I'm attached to ground. You know, there, uh, you can buy, um, they use these at uh, uh, electronics factories. Their leg straps and mm. they conduct your leg. Yeah. Your so the so I've been through all of the um, <laughs> possibilities, and as a performer, the quickest, as a theremin performer, doing what I do, the quickest way to get in and out is to have a little clip. The, the yeah. The fabric's right. already on me, and I take the alligator clip and it's, it's, it's already exposed, so I just clip onto the fabric. Okay. So that's super fast. And a solution I did before that uh, was just get. Uh, <coughs> Aluminum foil tape it on the bottom of my, sh of my sole and then step on the plate. <coughs> that, that tape, that the conductive surface has to wrap around my sock into my leg and that's yeah. <laughs> challenging. I can do that again. Randy, uh, in the example you just played, the polyphonic yeah. example, yeah. so you had played three notes and now you want to change that first note to be the uh, some different right. note, you're right? Getting, you're, 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 that's what I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm getting to, but I'm not, not quite there yet. Okay. Uh, the plan is to plan is to be able to sustain a note. This is these are sostenuto uh, functions, and take that note and move it wherever I want, whenever I want, no matter which note it's sustaining. So that's like a for a long term goal. But wouldn't that be cool? Is it because each has its own channel and you just They're return to own, that channel? All voices are on their own channel, just yeah. the same as if you were to play the surface with different fingers. Right. Yeah. But uh, in this case, I'm storing uh, whatever relevant information. Uh, I guess it's uh, CC74 pitch bend, mess, uh, pitch bend uh, uh, amount and note. And uh, yeah. The, the future will probably be a, a button that allows me to modulate in X, Y, or Z for any note that's sustaining. So then I could play blah, 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 and then modulate it up, or take the third, and oh, that wasn't in tune. I'll take the third and move it in tune to huh. accommodate for a, a, another temperament. But it would be like automation, right? Where if you're returning to that other note, your hand position all all oh, needs it's to be, intercept it's a linear, it. Yeah, it's a serial operation. You know, yeah. I gotta be on top of it. I gotta be like on the ball. Nobody's gonna figure out what the heck they're doing with their hands. Or anything. Nobody's gonna figure that. Out, no. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, after a, a little while, after working on all this stuff, I, I realized it's gonna basically look like voodoo. It's gonna look like like, mag like a magic show, and I'm I'm the freak. So uh, I'm okay with that now. Uh, it took a while. Uh, all right, so uh, I can do some more tricks. But uh, what I wanted to actually is play sounds. This is what what was enabled for me uh, with the connection to the continuum. So so the number of sounds. Oh, there's another. Okay, so there's another limitation. How do I change presets? So I built that into this app too. These pretty much come straight from the editor, uh, the Egan Matrix uh, Continuum Editor, and. Uh, so there's the 16 uh, user presets, but this there's another thing is like I wanted to be able to access all the the presets in the system library, uh, and how do you do that if you're a theremin player and you're busy with all with both your hands? Well, you you get uh, a, you get gestural control involved. So all I have to do is is this. Mm. 
<laughs> and I can go through all the presets very quickly. Uh, all right, that's what <laughs> Okay, let's say I want that. I want the wind uh, preset number two. Uh, and for some reason, I, 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 my mouse dropped to the ground. I can't, there's a mouse, mouse right here, a little pad. So it's also accessible. My mouse dropped to the, the ground. Oh, I can't get it to it, but I want to change to the wind pad patch. I just do this and this. <laughs> oh, I went I went too far. I went too far again. I think it's because I need to set the thresholds of the timing. Where's this where's the sensor? Where, where it's are you? It's hidden right behind you can't see it. Ah, okay. <laughs> it's right in this corner. You can come up and see so, it. So you're the noise you're gonna get get from outside influence is so low now. Yeah. So this is a LIDAR sensor, it's called a time of flight. Sensor. It's, these are commercially available. It's a very good sensor, um, decent control rate, but the beam width is very cylindrical, and it goes up as high as I want. So I set in the firmware 400 millimeters or so to make that smaller. Are those normally used in mass spectrometers. What's that? You know, are those normally used in mass spectrometers? I think they're just they're used in automobiles too. Just for yeah. Yeah. yeah, all sorts of things. Yeah. So. Uh, the, yeah, the cool thing is, I added you know gesture, some gesture control. If I want to do a quick uh, patch preset change, I just did it. I don't know if you guys saw it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm already on. So I'll go through a, a few presets, and uh, <coughs> you can hear. This is one of my favorites, actually, uh, made by our friend Eric. Um, the, brass family, the entire brass family is in one Giga Matrix preset. If you're not aware of that particular preset, get into it. It's so awesome. But what, uh, what's cool about the theremin control of that particular preset is that in MIDI Merlin you can, and I, I'll, this is what I wanted to mention earlier to you, uh, I'll mention it now. I only have two controllers here, uh, pitch and amplitude. So how do you get three? Uh, how do you modulate three things with two, with two controllers? So I've got uh, Z and Y being modulated with one hand. And so I set the range of Y in, in uh, this software here. And I put, in the, put the input in and you can see the output over mm. here is much narrower. So this is very similar to the Continuum Mini's Y, uh, y range when you're just in the middle and you don't want to throw it out, out to the extremes too much. So this is, you can watch the, uh, the indicators move as I increase amplitude. And those can be inverted, and, you know, scaled, offset, however you like. But in the B brass to pre, uh, preset and continue, continuum, you can get the entire brass family. I wanted to have it today, that's the one thing I didn't get to, but uh, this is what that sounds like. Thank you. 